30 days ago, I built a mini tide pool in my room. These animals evolved to survive the harsh reality of the ocean's tide. Low tide, where pools of water get trapped and food and resources are limited. Despite the dangers they will have to face, will these animals adapt to survive or will they be doomed from the start? To find out, we have to go back to day one. I think this is probably the 98th time I've been to Petco. New month, another video, and I need to make some money this month, and I'm kind of on a budget. You're making him nervous. All I literally bought was a tank and two pumps. Well guys, here it is. Is there ecosystem? Well, this is gonna be step one, setting up the tank. And yes, I actually broke my ankle. So I'm making an internal filter. To do this, you need some silicone and a few pieces of plastic, and someone to help. The reason why I'm making my own filter is because I'm broke and I don't have any more money to spend. After that son, it was time to put the pumps in. I had to drill a perfect size hole for our tube to fit inside of. Then I sealed them off with a little bit of glue. So now that I'm finished, I wanted to see if it actually worked. I begin filling it up with this hose water. Once it's filled, the water should go through these holes. So now, we have a waterfall. Once that fills up, it eventually fills up the other chamber. And lastly, it reaches the pump to get shot back in the tank. And if you're buying this, they are kind of expensive, so if you're broke, you can just make one. But it's important to add the right stuff. In my filter, I'm putting carbon and a sponge. That's pretty much it. The sponge filters large debris, and the carbon removes discoloration and odors that might be left behind by poo. It also makes my room not smell like kelp and uh, oh shit. And now our tank is ready for life. And for the next step, we have to get sand and water. I went to my local bay and I made sure the tide was high so I could get the freshest water. Some people buy water for their fish tanks, but when you're like me, you find it for free. Well, the benefits of real water is because it's from Mother Nature herself. And on top of that, it's free so I can maximize profits on this video. After collecting some water, it was time to get some sand. The sand I was getting from the bay was so bad, probably because it's pretty muddy. You can see the water I pour out here. It's like brown. But luckily, I had one spot in mind where they had the best sand. Sand that is pure and free. And the spot was a beach. Who would have thought? You might be wondering, why don't I just get this sand? Well, I wanted the ocean sand. But there was a problem. The waves were huge. My God, oh my huge. god. Look how huge they are. Bro, look at that barrel. Yeah, bro, I was shredding out there. All right, the waves are kind of big right now. We're gonna try to steal some sand. When the water goes in like that, that's when I have to go. All right, guys, there's no waves right now. I have to go quick. Guys, I gotta go now. All right, it's not much, but at least we got a little bit. I think this will be good, though. We're now dialed because we got sand and water. I put in about two inches of sand because that's all I got. And I spread it around evenly. And while I was pouring the water in, I made a huge mistake. Sand actually got inside of the small white tube and went inside of the pump and it got jammed. This pump is not even working, bro. I had to spend my last money on this new pump. Come on, yes! I resealed it with man-made glue. You might be wondering where I got these lights. Well, I had to go in my savings account that had $20 inside of it, and thankfully it funded these lights. I aggressively topped the tank off with water, hoping the same problem doesn't happen again. But now that everything's set up, our next step is to get some rocks and seaweed. Right, so we gotta go at low tide. And the best time seems to be about five o'clock. I traversed many miles away to find these certain tide pools. And once I arrived, I began to realize how cool tide pools actually are. I saw super tiny tide pools, a little bit bigger, and here's a fish that came to say hi. Hello. And I also saw tide pools with a lot of current. I also saw a lot of sea anemones. This one was a fatty. 
just like Lizzo. We also wanted to touch them to see how squishy they were. Now that we were done touching up on fatties, it was time to get back on my mission. My main goal was to find rocks with a lot of growth on them, just like this. The barnacles and seaweed, that's all good stuff. Whoa, hey! What's that? I also saw this cool little starfish, and I let him go. Right next to him, I also found a lot more rocks. I collected a lot of rocks, and I made a rock pile. Definitely enough for my needs. While I was walking, I found this piece of seaweed. I didn't know if it was dried out, but I wanted to try to put it in my tank to see if it would survive. Meanwhile, I found this little kelp lacking, and he's attached to a tiny rock. He was perfect, and I took him home. So this was the important part. Inside this chamber, I put a lot of the rocks in that were small, and the water that passes through this chamber will break down harmful waste like ammonia and nitrates. Now that that's done, I thought I'd start decorating the tank. I basically just laid out the rocks on the edge of the glass, and now we pretty much have a finished base tank. All we have to do now is just plug it in. And just like that, we kind of just got a rock pile. It's kind of empty. So, I got some super glue and our seaweed. I basically just glue them to the rock. The good thing about this seaweed is they actually like to eat the bad toxins in the water. And oh yeah, that seaweed we found? Yeah, still smells like butthole. He did look kind of dry, but I think he'll survive. So it's basically all done now. And if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. So I thought I'd put a propeller in my tank. We gotta move it right here. Good. All right, let's turn it on. Oh my God, it's freaking loud. Yo. On the surface of the water, you can see a little bit of current. All it does is just move the water around a little bit. And it basically took me all day to make this tank. So I wanted to go to bed and on day two, we found our first problem. Now, if you hear that weird noise, it's creating a lot of bubbles, and I don't know if I put enough water in. I just topped it off with a little bit of water, and everything was fine right after. I mean, it's literally day two, but under the sand is something unbelievable. Underneath the sand right here, you would not believe what I just found. Look at this. Look at it. So I wanted to see if it was safe to add any other life, and according to these two white squares, we seem to be chillin'. So I thought I'd introduce our first tide pool creatures. Hermit crabs. These guys are the bottom feeders. They clean up basically any leftovers or waste. And to make sure they get their oxygen, I added this little perch on top of the wave maker. Here, our hermit crabs can get a breath of air, although they can survive underwater for a while. So, I wanted to see if they were hungry. So, I went to my garage freezer. You know, the freezer that has food in it that's like 10 years old. I think I've had stuff in here for 10 years. Except for these, I munch on these on the daily. So, I got some squid, and it was in a big bag, of course. Although the wrapper was pretty hard to open, so I decided I thought I had to unthaw it. I get that. This hermit crab smells some fish nearby. A little squid has floated to the sea floor. Sooner or later, the hermit crab finds his meal. This one is smart as he hides it. <laughs> Well, day three rolled around, and all I can smell is a fresh smell of butthole. Oh, yeah. But the good thing is, the hermit crabs ate all the pieces of squid. And on top of that, we got stupid snails that can't help themselves up. 
Well, not much has happened so far, but on day 5, the sponge got dirty. And our kelp? It's still kelping. Other than that, I've always been seeing these weird crab meetings, but I think it's because they're actually very social creatures. You can actually see these guys are doing a good job of cleaning up the waste left behind. The leftover squid that I put in are slowly getting munched on. They even like to hide sometimes. But most of the time they're just scavenging around and interacting with each other. Other than the hermit crab, there's still more creatures that lurk in the tide pools. These little guys are fast, and they're one of the most common fish found in tide pools. This little guy is called an opali. You can see, they're very curious little fish. These guys are very smart and very fast. And just so you guys know, his name is Kevin, okay? Kevin. He's basically mapped out this whole tank in his head, and he really likes his corner. He also likes hiding underneath this seaweed as well. You can kind of see right here, but their eyes are very blue. And now, it's day 13 and the sponge is noticeably dirty. And I'm not going to clean it out yet because it's holding a lot of good bacteria. Other than that, there's a lot of algae that grew on the inside of the tank. So, I got something to help out. These guys absolutely love algae. And if you look closely, you can see how they scrape off the algae. They have a small little tongue and they scrape the algae off the glass. It honestly looks like a vagina. And I can't lie, he is quite groovy with it. Going back to Kevin, I felt kind of bad because he was also a social fish. So, I got more. I can't lie, these things love to trap in packs. You might be curious what these little guys eat. One of their favorite foods is algae. You can see this little guy picking at the rock here. They also love small crustaceans as well. Right here, you can see them picking off some algae at the seaweed. But there is one other creature I couldn't leave out. This is a tide pool sculpin. They are in fact insanely camouflaged. If you look closely, there's small little hairs that stick off from its skin. This helps them stay camouflaged from its predators, just like birds or even otters. Even though he likes to hide all day, I'm gonna name him Jerry. And I'm gonna leave Jerry in charge of the tank. Let's play a little game. See if you can spot the fish in this clip. So if you saw it, congratulations. Going back to our algae problem, you can see this snail, it, he's not even cleaning the glass. Bruh. So I had to do it myself, and I just used a scrub. But the good thing is, Kevin and his friends love to eat the algae that fell off of the scrub while I was cleaning it. And now, it is day 16 and everything is actually looking fabulous. And I don't really feed the fish just because they eat a lot of the kelp. And I mean a lot. Here's a comparison from day one. Most of the time, these guys are in their own little school. Like, they're always together, so I wanted to call them Kevin and the gang. And for some reason, Jerry was getting pressed. And I think Kevin and the gang were trying to take leadership of the tank. However, Jerry's skill in camouflage scared him off. Isn't that right, Jerry? Yeah, <laughs> boy. Other than violence in the tank, everything else seems to be thriving. Since it's been some time since we first made our tank, I wanted to test the water levels. Surprisingly enough, there's zero bad toxins. And thanks to the kelp, they take care of it. And I did notice something pretty cool. If you look closely, the gang rubs their back on the sand. Usually, they'll have an itch that they'd like to relieve. Or, there's a parasite that might be attacking the gang. Also, another cool behavior I saw from Jerry is that they can change colors. Not entirely, but just to the color of their surroundings. Right here, you can see Jerry turn black. But as he went on the sand, he turned white. This is before, and this is after. But most of the time, he just bounces around. Ain't that right, Jerry? Yep. It's now day 21, and we have 9 days left. The sponge did get very dirty, but I just left it. Inside the filtration system, I saw a lot of algae too. But I left it because they like to eat nitrates as well. Everything inside the tide pool has been doing great. I was literally just about to feed these fish, and a literal landslide happened. 
you can see the gang bolted to see what happened. Soon after, there is a lot of debris floating in the water, and I think they were eating some of it, so I wanted to give them some real food. These are brine shrimp, or also known as sea monkeys. You know, the one you used to get as a pet years ago. Well, sea monkeys are actually fish food. I started feeding them and they went bazonkers. You might think I put a lot of food in there, but I also have to feed the hermit crabs and kelp. Wait, plants can eat shrimp? Well, when leftover food gets left behind, it creates a lot of toxins, and the kelp feeds off the toxins. Right now, I give them food about twice a week, because the fish also like to eat a lot of the kelp. You might have noticed, but there are lots of small bubbles in the tank. This allows the creatures to have a healthy supply of oxygen. It's now day 25, and since then, I've only been topping the water off when it got low, and cleaning the glass from algae. Since I've no lid on my tank, I have to top the water off about once every three days. I leave it open because I think it's cool to see the current on the top, as well as seeing the fish from above. It definitely gives me that real tide pool feel, which is pretty sick. A lot of the times, I see the opalies hide in the small little cracks. It's definitely a normal behavior with these guys. Most of the time, I see the hermit crabs just eating a lot of random stuff. Like this one's pretty stupid, he's munching on a shell. He also likes to eat a lot of sand as well. Whoa! Hey, watch your head there. Like I said, the violence in this tank is pretty insane. So it's still day 25, and I've actually been noticing some very paranormal activities. As I was editing, this happened. So this happens a lot of the time. And I've also noticed a pile of debris in this one corner. You can see the hermit crabs kind of gather around it, maybe because that's where all the debris go. I definitely wanted to clean it so I can have a cleaner looking tank. I use a small green net to scoop up all the debris I could. After I cleaned it, this is a before and after. Everybody seems to be happy and that's great. And it's also very cool how everything interacts with each other. But now, it is now day 28. Inside the filtration system, the snails somehow got inside of it. Here's a good clip of him actually eating algae. Along with that, over this whole time, the sponge got really dirty. I think I might clean it out, just give it a nice little squeeze. Yeah, I gave that thing a nice little squeeze. But I actually ended up just cleaning it in the sink. Alright, this is as much as I'm gonna clean it. I put our fresh sponge back inside. Guys, look at this little guy, Jerry. Jerry's my favorite one. He's pretty humble. I mean, he doesn't talk much, but I, he's definitely the coolest one. Alright, so it's literally dirty again. I think it's definitely the hermit crabs plus the fish. I think these guys just rip it up and it eventually just falls down into a little pile. I started scooping up the debris and it didn't even take long for it to pile up again. What I find really cool about this tank is that everything in there relies on each other for a healthy tank. Like the plants rely on the fish poo, and the fish rely on the kelp to have clean water, and the hermit crabs make sure to clean up all the leftover food. But the only thing is I still feed the fish so they can get a healthy amount of food. However, without this filtration system, everything would probably die. Guys, oh, it's kind of dark in here. It is now day 30. I really don't know how to act. I don't know what to do. What do I do now? Well, I know exactly what to do. All right, we got Kevin in the gang. We got Jerry, some hermit crabs. They do not know what is about to happen. Alright guys, I'm just gonna try to grab him and I'm just gonna... Oh no! Oh! Cause I think they're all together right there. If you enjoyed this video, this one is probably like 10 times better. 